Yes! We got it. The go outside achievement. I was actually kind of nervous. The reason I fired this up was because on, on Steam, it was no longer showing the last time I played this game, which was sometime, oh, I want to say in 2013. I, I, at some certain point, I had not played the game for about six months. And it has been expanded, and there's been a lot of different things that went on, but I decided I was going to go after the Go Outside achievement. Legitimately. Without tricking out my system clock or anything like that. I don't even know if that works with this. But I have done it. I have not played the game for five years. And now we've got, legitimately, I even gave it a couple extra months, the Go Outside achievement. So let's play a little Stanley Parable. Wow, the resolution is really, really low on this. I think maybe we should fix that. Although maybe we should leave it as it is. A little low res. The end is never the end, that's true. On so many levels. The, the end is never the end is loading. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Well, that's different. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Now we can, we can show you one of the possible endings here. Just look at the door. Be cowardly. And eventually, eventually, it takes a little bit. Doing nothing is a thing you can do in this game. And it has an effect. Where it did. Wonder how long you have to wait. Can we uh, can we can we change our options here a little bit? Because this, this low res is really messing with my. Wow, that's like old school. Can I not? There we go. Even that's all you can. Okay, here we go. Let's try that. Discard or cancel. Wait, changes have been made. Discard current changes. What the heck? Click OK. And that blew the game up. Let's see, did we actually get the... Uh... Okay, well, we, we have improved it.
Okay, let's see. If we go to widescreen. There we go. Let's go widescreen. We can get it even better. And that should blow. Now it's finally looking pretty. Let's begin the game in widescreen. I know I should skip, but I want it in all its pretty. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. That's not very much different than real life. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Now, there's an achievement that you know, basically says, you know, beat the game in under 4 minutes 22 seconds. So that means that we'd have to sit here for 4 minutes to get that ending. A good 5 minutes staring at the door. Maybe we'll do a we'll do a quick you know I don't know should I leave it should I leave it go that long just to see the ending you know what I can entertain you in that time we can I can I could tell you a quick story back in uh, 2009 I always tell people I didn't lose my 401ks in the great crash of 2008 I lost them in the great layoff of 2009 we had a, a massive bloodletting at my company where there's you know. A good portion of the engineering staff was let go, and at, you know when you when you're dealing with that, you're you're trying to you know, cover costs. So I ended up pulling out, you know, doing a, basically a hardship withdrawal on all my 401ks. And there was one company that I had worked with back in the 90s, really the first true engineering job I'd ever gotten. And I had to go get a signature from one of their officers so that they you know, could get the uh, the 401k released to me. You know, they had to sign off on it. So I went back, hadn't been there in, wow, let me think. It was 10 years by that point. I'd been 10 years with the, the, the company that had just laid me off. And I uh, had some other stories about that, too. There's that go, just going from this company to that company, interesting times. But I went back, and no word of lie. I walked through the door. There's no secretary. Nobody, hello, nobody there. Walked through the offices. I, mean, I can just wander through the offices, wander through the cubicles. Nobody's there. It was like the rapture had happened and I, I got left behind. And I was kind of getting a little concerned. I'm looking around. Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. <laughs> I think that's a little different. Maybe they've changed this ending. I don't know. But at any rate, I finally heard a little bit of noise off in the distance. And I, I followed that. And I found my old office manager in her office taking phone calls. I'm like, Terry? She's like, Vince, how you doing? Oh, my goodness, it's been so long. I, I was kind of happy she remembered me. You know, it was, it was a, a thing. I'm like, Terry, where is everybody? He said, oh, I'm it. You know, things have not gone well. And pretty soon that they're going to close this up. So I mean, I just missed not being able to get the signature. I'm like, did you sign this for me? Oh yeah, no problem. Signs it off. She always was a wonderful person. She was a great, great boss to have. Great office manager. 
But yeah, I've actually had this where you go in, where did everybody go? And I thought I'd visit with some people, say hello, see how the gang's doing. They're all, they're all gone. And now that's 10 years ago. That story's 10 years old. And from when I first started at that other company's 20 year Wow. Actually, come to think of it, when did I start? Yeah, I started with Pocono, I want to say March of, of 99. So here we are. Somewhere we've I've just passed my... 20 anniversary from, from back in the day when I worked for that company. Wow. I'm starting that. Actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong. I left that company to go to um, the other one in 99. That was why I, you know, I started, yeah, I started in March of 99 for a company that shall remain nameless. But, I mean, you know. So, yeah, so 25. Wow, I'm getting old. At 26 years of total experience coming out of college. So there you go. You can, have, you can do math on me now. Did they change this so you have a much longer wait time to get the door to, to close? That, it used to just close. And then they would talk about what a coward you were and how you need to be in a nice, safe place. Can we save? New saved game. Did I never save a game in this? The game is new. Okay, so we're saved. See, that's the trick with the Stanley Parable. You can do absolutely nothing, and it has effect. And, they, and it's a warped enough game that maybe you'll have to sit there for three hours. Which I don't think would make an entirely entertaining video. I can tell you the, I can tell you the other story, and that that might help. You know, we'll, we'll tell the story of how I went from Company A to Company B. When I was with Company A, the one I started with in 1994 and was stayed with until 1999 when I left, I was a contractor, and I was I was a contractor at you know, a, a local place around here that at the time made television screens. Big, big production place. Made most of the television. If you had an old tube TV, they made it for the most part. I think Sony made their own, but everybody else bought them from them. And a uh, massive place. We weren't treated, as contractors, we weren't paid very well. I mean, I think I think I was getting paid, what the heck, back in 1994 when I started, it was 13 bucks an hour. And for, for engineering, and it's uh, and I was getting, I believe the company company A was making about a hundred bucks an hour off of me, so they were they were making bank off of me. And one of the tricks about about that is that, again, um, they were making a lot of money. I wasn't making a lot of money, but one of the, the ways they kept you, and you didn't, I didn't find this out till years later, um, was that they had contracts. Were their people placed in different companies all over the place locally, and if you got hired directly by any of anyone they had a contract with, they got a finder's fee, even if they didn't place you. Which I think got to be illegal on some level, but I mean, all right, whatever contracts. So, for years, I was trying to find a better paying position, and I couldn't. I couldn't get anywhere. So finally, Company B agrees to interview me. I interviewed for the job. They liked me. They wanted to hire me. And they said, well, hey, you know, we, we want to hire you, but we have a contract, you know, we have contractors from company A here, and therefore we have to ask them permission to hire you. And so I said to them, so you want to call my boss and tell him I'm trying to quit? They said, yeah, well, fortunately we have to do that. I'm like, I'm thinking there's a lot of risk here. But I really, really, at that point, I think I had gone in five years I was making two dollars an hour more. I was up to fifteen blazing dollars an hour. Okay, so thirty thousand a year, roughly. I'm like, fine, do it. I hate this place. I'm, I, I want out. Let's, let's just do that. So then, they next day I get pulled into the office. Yeah, there was the president, the vice president, and, and I I want to say it was the vice president just yelling at me. He was absolutely so angry about how we betrayed the I betrayed the company. I'm a terrible person, and this and that, and going on. And I gave it back to him. I said, look, for the last five years we took all the abuse from the other place where they told they used to say stuff to us like, you know, if you don't like it, there's a door I can put anyone in your seat, and they'll do just as good a job. 
and you've never you've never paid us anything that's reasonable, and you're you know we've taken all this time, back and forth for three hours. I don't remember the, all the conversations. Mostly that's been blotted out, but I remember very specifically it was three hours of people screaming at me. And they said, well, we have to work something out with them. We'll have to talk with this company and we'll have to see what we're, what we're going to do. So they talked with Company B. I don't remember how much time went by, a day, two days. And they said, okay, well, we have a plan. You're going to go work for us, for Company B, for, say, three weeks or something like that. Then after that, you'll work for them. I said, well, you can't make that call. I haven't accepted an offer from Company B. And they said, well, you'd better because after those three weeks, you're no longer working for us. So Company B officially got me fired. Now, when I interviewed with Company B, I said to them, they asked me how much I wanted. And I, I, I picked a number, uh, 45000 45000 a year was how much the, you know, the production facility was paying their engineers. I'm like, that was a pretty good amount of money back then. So I'm like, yeah, let's go for, for that. And when they, they said they were good with that. They were happy to pay me forty five k. When I called up and said, hey, they're firing me. They took 10000 off that offer and offered me thirty five. It was still a $5,000 a year increase, and I was fired, so I had to take it. But yeah, so I, I finally found out later on, you did, did the math, and that was about the amount that would have been the finder's fee for Company A. So I essentially bought my freedom. That was that was how that worked. I, I bought my freedom from Company A, and uh, I had to work at that level for a couple years, but then they, they ran into a problem where they were trying to do that with everybody. They were trying to get everybody at 35000 and it was just not competitive. And they, they had to hire more engineers, and so they had to pay them more than anybody that was there was making. Of course, you can't have that because, you know, reasons. So uh, people will freak out. So what they did was they gave us compression raises, and I recall I got like a 16% raise that year, and it was a, it ended up at you know working out after a couple of years. I don't remember having to wait this long to get the door to shut and the game to end. This could very well be one of the ways they've modified the game. And yet, very much like the first achievement there, the. Uh, the, the go outside achievement. I'm this far invested into it. I've told you a couple stories. We kind of have to see it happen, don't we? Well, you don't have to watch the whole time. Because if I don't record it, how will we know how long it takes? Could make for a very bizarre video. What to do? What to do? We can talk about Article 13. I mean, that, that's a thought. I mean, you know, everyone's, everyone on the internet is saying that video game basic, you know, video game streaming is over because Article 13 will, will stop people from using video game footage because video game footage is, of course, copyrighted. And so we're looking at, you know, an outside window of two years where, we'll, you know, by the time all this stuff could possibly get implemented before you won't be able to do streaming, you won't be able to do video game videos anymore. I don't see it happening that way. First of all, you know, Twitch and YouTube have a, a, a enough structures, I think, in place to to handle copyright stuff. I mean, if, if, it, if it gets copyrighted, they just redirect the money or they'll block it and they'll do that normally. So the fact that they're going to do it more normally in Europe, I, I don't know, maybe they'll just block stuff in Europe if it's really, they're going to be that touchy about it. So does that mean that, you know, all the the great game streamers will have to move from, you know, say England to L.A., something like that, Jamaica, some, some place where the rules don't apply? Um, you know, stuff will continue. It'll change the, the landscape of stuff, theoretically. But I, I don't imagine... Like, I don't see a reason right now. I mean, already these games are set up because they, they want you to upload them. They want you to do playthroughs. They want these things to happen. If you're playing Team Fortress 2, there is an achievement for uploading a video to YouTube. Can you sit back down at least? Will you push a button? Can't interface or anything. There are achievements for that. So I mean, you know, same with you know, Grand Theft Auto. They want you uploading videos. 
So, I mean, are they going to tell these companies, you know, is Europe going to tell these companies you can't have the people that you have licensed your software to use, you can't have them use it the way you want them to use it? You, you can't let them make videos? That would be, that would be pretty bizarre, really, if you think about it. Maybe, maybe they will. We'll have to see how it all shakes out. If you suddenly see all my videos disappear and nothing comes back, or if my channel suddenly just gets taken down as a massive copyright infringement kind of person. Um, well then, hey, listen, it's been really cool, guys. I really do appreciate, you know, all of your support over the years. I don't know. Maybe, maybe what we'll do is I'll record this and then edit a bunch of it out. I think we'll do math on it. So... Let's do the time warp again. Okay, so I went and took a shower, brushed my teeth. Nothing has happened. I wonder if they took that ending out of the game. They haven't been known to remove endings. So I think what we'll do is we'll save. We'll save this ending and we'll 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 call this an ending for right now. Good enough, right? For right now, we'll just we'll we'll have cut a lot of this out. There's a couple other things I really need to accomplish today, so we're gonna move on to the next thing here. And who knows? We'll re we'll revisit this save file and then we'll see if anything can be done to make the door close. But on that note, for now, this is your Black Knight, aka Stanley. No, my name's my name's not Stanley, it's Vince. Vin Chuda, shoot a multimedia, Black Knight, the whole nine yards. Have a great night. That, that's kinda neat. You are Stanley.